The woman holding this baby is not her mother. The woman the baby is being passed onto did not birth her. And the man whose wife took possession of the baby, he isn't a father either. All three of them trading the baby do not know her next destination. The cries you hear are those of a baby born in eastern Nigeria, sold to a couple in the southwest who have no established home address, occupation, friends, or relatives. An innocent baby sold into the unknown world in exchange for 2 million naira, a backdoor sale backed up by the payment of entitlement to the police and the judiciary. A life for cash transaction initiated by people claiming to be working for God, who are instead firing arrows at God. Arrows of God, an undercover investigation by Fisayo Shoyombo. Let's just have go straight into the conversation uh, with uh, Fisayo Shoyombo uh, this morning. Arrows of God, the documentary. Uh, Fisayo Shoyombo is founder, Foundation for Investigative Journalism. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. He joins us from Abuja studio. Uh, 19 months and counting. How's the trip been? Sorry, please, please take that again. I said 19 months, I said, first of all, welcome, thanks for joining us, but 19 months of investigative journalism, how's it been? Yeah, um, different emotions, there were times when it was, it was, it was about curiosity, about finding out if my tip-off was correct or not. There were times when it was about um, whether our cover had been blown or not because there was a seven month gap during which they didn't you know, speak to us. Uh, there were times if we wondered if it was more dangerous than we thought. Um, when we started to hear things like, um, we will get documents for the baby, but we have to pay entitlements to the police and the court. We started to imagine that it was a ring that was bigger than us. Um, there were times when I also felt we could extend it further to, for instance, try to find out the identity of the mother of the baby that was given to us, who exactly is she, we still don't know. Um, the extent to which the police were involved, the extent to which the judiciary was involved. And it got to a point we thought, okay, fine, we can't know everything. We do know a bit. We didn't know for a fact that it wasn't a one-off occurrence. Arrows of God had been doing it. We do know for a fact that we got a baby, we paid, we do know for a fact that it's not even a case of a lack of due diligence. There was an absence of any sort of diligence. Nobody attempted wow. to know my house. Nobody attempted to know where I worked. Nobody verified anything. So it was purely about you have the money, we have a baby to give you. And we thought that was enough. After putting it out, we then expect the relevant agencies to take it forward and say, at this point in time, what more can we do? Can we find the mother? Can we arrest the, 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 um, the, 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 the culprits? Can we dig out more information? So we did our job up to a point and we expect that the relevant agencies, if they are serious enough, um, can take it forward. Okay. There are some people wondering what in the universe is this fella take, talking about? So first of all, for 19 months, you studied, trailed, investigated, and eventually penetrated a Christian orphanage that had been selling babies under the table. Tell us how the story started. You, you, we understand you got your tip off uh, December of uh, two years ago, 2021. Tell us how yes. all of that started for you and how far so far. Yes, so somebody who wanted to, a couple who wanted to adopt a baby, you know, we built 1.5 million era by Arrows of God Orphanage, and then they told someone who told someone who told someone who told me. 
as a matter of fact, I do imagine that that couple might have read the story and might be thinking, oh, it happened to us without knowing that it's actually their story that led to this investigation. Because the person, my informant, is the fourth in the chain. I then said, okay, but let's not just make assumptions. Let's follow the trail. Let's find out. So what I did was find someone to be my wife and then, you know, my wife in court. And then we went to the, the, the orphanage. They gave us a phone number. Happened to be the phone number of the founder who is an ordained minister. A reverend, a former matron, um, retired high-ranking officer in the Nigerian army. So we started to make phone calls from the very first conversation. She had told us it's in the east that you are coming to buy your baby. From the very first phone conversation. Just to be when clear. There wasn't what, yet a Just to be meeting. clear. Don't one, forget. One, one second, uh, Fisayo. You said he told you it's in the east you are coming to buy. Was that the word used or is just... Yes. The exact word is buy. If you watch the documentary, you would hear it. Both the transcription and the voice. It's in the east you are coming to buy that one. And so there have been people who have, you know, who've read the story or watched the documentary and have said, oh, they didn't sell a baby to you, there was an adoption. No. From the very first conversation, it was, it's in the East, you are coming to buy that one. So then, I mean, I, I, I'm just lost right now because I, I, can't, I can't just imagine that. So... That process started for you. Uh, uh, what uh, what did you discover in the process? I know. I mean, for you, by the way, watching us, you have to watch this documentary tomorrow uh, at seven p.m. Uh, seven thirty p.m. on channels television. But for today, what are the things that you discovered? That I mean, you, you've speak, spoken about uh, systemic uh, um, gaps that didn't protect these children. Would you say this is just a one-off case or there could be others like that in various parts of the nation? This absolutely is not a one-off case. So the good news is that it's not all orphanage that is badly run. Um, there were three orphanage homes that we tried to reach and they told us from the start that look you have to go speak to the government not to us one of them is messy something something messy it's in egbeda in lagos uh, there's an other orphanage um, in in maryland faramobi ajike street i can't remember the name right now. and then there's a third orphanage um in palm grove the one in maryland was so professional that as we we're entering we knew they were not going to you know so yes there are very well-run orphanages in nigeria but arrows of god can't possibly be the only orphanage that sells babies without doing due diligence. Mm. So the, that challenge is there. And then uh, how about the institutional gaps? What are the things that ought to happen for what, well, from what you found out, um, going by well, you know, what happened in these exception, exceptions that you talked about, or rather, should I say, the norm, which is the well-run orphanages. What, are the, what is the process you found, and what are the gaps you found in this uh, one where you know, babies are being sold? So for me, the, the well-run orphanages have only taken a deliberate and an intentional decision to operate by ethical standards. You know, Nigeria generally is a country where you have to personally decide to play by the rules if you have to. Because for every single day, you get reasons from the government, from public institutions to do things through the back door. Now, policy-wise, it can't be possible that it is so difficult without connection, without funds, to adopt a baby in good time from the government. So when that is not happening, then people find alternatives. Mm. You know, one of what I did was to go to the Ministry of uh, Youth, Alausa, to say I wanted to adopt a baby in November 2022. They sent me a text message the following month. Since then, I haven't heard from them. So imagine you made an application for adoption to government, mm. and in eight months, there was nothing. So if someone told you of a faster way to get a baby, 
you know, you would want to try it. So the first thing is that government has to recognize that if the process for adoption is stiff, unnecessarily long, it has to be long because a lot of due diligence has to be done, but it can't be unnecessarily long. It can't be that for eight months, you don't hear from government. You know, I interviewed a lady who I tried to adopt for two years. She got the first contact from government after two years. So if you wait two years and government doesn't reach out to you and you hear of another alternative, you do it. So the most important thing that needs to happen as a result of this investigation is for government to understand that that process has to be simplified, has to be faster, has to be straightforward. People have to find it accessible, whether they are rich or middle class. You know, when that is done, then the motivation, the market for fast sale of babies will go down. Now, with Arrows of God, the things I found out, one is from the first day, they use the word buy. That's number one. Number two, from the first day, they made it clear that I was coming to the east, meaning that it's a strategy to, meaning that Lagos is a smoke screen. You know, Lagos is used to attract the rich people and then they are moved to the east because from day one they said, you are coming to the east. Number three is that there was absolutely no due diligence. You know, I can't imagine that someone, you know, someone showed up in my house to say, um, they wanted to take care of my cousin, my niece, not even my child, but my cousin, my niece for a week. I would want to know their home. I would want to know what they do. I would want to know where they work. Right now, the offer they don't, you know, haven't spoken to me since July 6th when I got the baby. They don't know where to find me. The address in Lagos that I put there, they didn't send someone there to go and knock on that door and say, is this man a ritualist? Is it... An organ, is he an organ trafficker or does he really need a baby? Mm -hmm. They didn't do due diligence. They don't know where I work. Okay. They can't mention one of my colleagues. They can't mention any friend of mine. Mm -hmm. So how do you give me a baby, a whole human being, a life? Mm -hmm. You give it to me without knowing where I live, without knowing where I work, without knowing where to find me. Mm -hmm. Now, that cannot happen, shouldn't happen okay. in the same country. And okay. I hope the authorities are going to take a step. Oh, most certainly. Because uh, they, they will if watch, nothing is done... To yeah, they will watch this documentary tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. And uh, it is something that we'll still talk about a little more often. But uh, you mentioned something earlier. We have just about five minutes for this. You mentioned something earlier about um, uh, the institutions that are... Uh, one way or the other indicted in your findings. You talked about the police, you talked about the judiciary, um, you talked about uh, government org organizations or agencies that ought to do their due diligence. Uh, what, what, is this something that you think the, each of them should come out and speak to or defend themselves or what? Because even just from the trailer, the, the, the promoting the program already on our channel tomorrow, we could see that they you could talk to us about that, that, that page that talked about uh, the police, you know, uh, just as one of those agencies uh, in, in that ought to have been involved in the process. I, I don't think it's for the police to come and defend themselves. I think it's for them to find the perpetrators, who are the guys in the police who authored that crime report, saying someone had come, and then they were, I mean, someone prepared that police document. And don't forget, the founder of Arrows of God, Arrows of God had said, we will pay entitlement to the police and the court to get it out. So it's clear, it's not about defense, it's about making an example of the criminals, because it's a crime. And then the court, look, you can't sanction the passing on of a baby to someone that you haven't seen. And they got out a court paper, you know, purporting that I was in court, my wife was in court, the welfare officer was in court, and it was, it was a decision taken in person by the court that we could have the baby. Of course, they didn't do it for free. So it's not a case of the institutions, you know, coming out to defend themselves. It's about coming out to make an example of the culprits and clean up their houses. Because at the end of the day, it, it, it shouldn't you know, happen that life just gets transferred from one person to another without any care where the babies are going to end up. Mm. Just to be clear, what role 
should the state governments play now uh, to kind of, I don't know, spade off, I mean, li literally scavenge the entire states and look for these uh, nefarious criminals? What, what are the things that you would recommend may or may not be in the, in the, in the documentary? Number one is, I have heard, I've not confirmed that the government has shut down that orphanage home. I will confirm in the coming hours, maybe an hour or two, there are people going there to confirm. But I don't think the solution is to shut that orphanage home down. I think it's to deal with the perpetrators, you know, and let other people within that organization who are open to running it the right way take over. I don't think it's to shut down arrows of God, because there are other kids there. That's number one. Second recommendation is that the government has to be intentional in making sure adoption is easier. Look, it has to be that the right way is the easier way. That's what I, I, I always give an example. In, in CBN wanted to um, make Nigerians spend less of cash and complicated the withdrawal of cash. But overseas, if they want you to use cards, they make incentives. You want to buy the train, they tell you it's 50 pounds if you are paying in cash. It's 40 pounds if you are using a card. So automatically you want to use the card. So the solution you want, it has to be the easier. It can't be that doing the right thing is the more difficult process. So government has to make it easier. Then nobody wants to patronize um, orphanage homes that sell babies any longer. That's number two. Number three is that the culprits have to be arrested and prosecuted. Mm. If people do wrong and the authorities don't make an example of them, don't let their cases serve as deterrent to other people, then the crime is going to continue. One last thing. What will who learn from watching this documentary tomorrow? Who are the people that you recommend it to and what are the things that each of these segments are going to learn? You have 60 seconds. Anyone who, has an off who runs an orphanage home, anyone who has a child, any mother, any father, anyone who relates with a human being has to watch it. Well, it's a lot already. I can't, I, I literally can't wait. But hey, I guess I have to wait. Fisayo Sheombo is founder, Foundation for Investigative Journalism, literally producer now of uh, Arrows of God, the documentary. Thank you so much for your time this morning. And um, God bless and protect you for all the good work you do for the nation. Thank you. I got the last few seconds, so thank you. All right. So please do yourself the favor of watching Arrows of God, the documentary, tomorrow, August 13, half past seven on Channels Television. We're back right after now. Stay with us.